Hello, this is Debu Tripathi, Editor-in-Chief of Cure Magazine, and I am at the 32nd Annual Breast Cancer Symposium in Miami. And I want to cover some of the areas that have been reviewed in the past couple of days. One of these is the development of HER2-based uh, therapies. Uh, and this is an area that has been evolving rapidly. About 20% of breast cancers are known to uh, carry amplification of the HER2 gene, HER2 gene and make uh, an excessive amount of this protein. This protein is a growth factor receptor that drives the growth of cells and it used to be a bad prognostic sign. Patients that were known to carry this particular gene amplification uh, had, had a worse survival, had a high risk of, higher risk of recurrence. But as we started to develop therapies against uh, the HER2 gene, particularly a drug called Herceptin, which has now uh, been around for over 15 years, uh, we started to improve the outcomes of these patients. Uh, patients with advanced breast cancer, we still have not been able to cure them if they have HER2 positive disease, but we have been able to extend their lives and the quality of their lives significantly. And progress is continuing to be made in this area. Second generation drugs such as Pergetta and also Cadsila, also known as TDM1, have further improved outcomes. Uh, this has also introduced some dilemmas as to how physicians should use these drugs and in what sequence they should use them. So for example, in early stage breast cancer, the goal is to actually improve the cure rate, to lower the number of people that have recurrences. And here we do have the ability to cure patients. In fact, most patients with early stage breast cancer can be cured, and, uh, but it's important that we analyze the tumor properly so we know what drugs to use. Uh, so for HER2 positive breast cancers, it is now fairly standard to use trastuzumab for all of them, except maybe the very small ones, ones that are under five millimeters or so. Uh, but there are new drugs now that are being tested in this area, and uh, one of them, Pergetta, is r recommended for larger tumors, particularly when it's given before surgery in the so-called neoadjuvant setting. Now, this is an area where there's some controversy. Should we be using the, the, the second antibody more uh, uh, more often. It does cause more side effects. It, it can cause significant diarrhea, uh, but these are generally not fatal side effects, and so uh, th this is an evolving area. Now, in the advanced setting, uh, we generally cannot cure patients, and, and this is uh, obviously a problem, even though we can prolong their lives. We need to desperately find out why patients become resistant in this setting, uh, because at some point, resistance does develop, and we are starting to explore the inner workings of this. Uh, but from a more practical standpoint, uh, even despite all of this research, clinicians today have to struggle with which of the drugs to use and when to use them. Uh, the the uh, second antibody, Progetta, is now uh, the typical recommended course along with Herceptin, so both the antibodies given together with chemotherapy. Uh, the other drug, TDM1 or Cadsila, uh, is given after patients progress on that, no longer respond. Uh, but should we be jumping the gun? Should we be using TDM1 earlier? So this was one of the debated issues. And it's important for patients to be aware of what the landscape is. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I'm communicating this to you, so that you can have an educated discussion with uh, your physician about it. We have several articles in Cure Magazine about this, and also in the online version that go into this further. Uh, but we really want to inform the public of what the current controversies are and what we do know about HER2 positive disease so they can have an informed discussion with their oncologist.